Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to graph systems of equations. So before when we were doing slope and slope intercept, we were just putting one line on one graph. So when I'm talking about systems, systems means more than one line. So in our case, we're just going to be looking at two at a time. Um, and three things can happen. They can cross each other. So if they cross, that would be called one solution, and we would name that point at which they cross. Second thing that can happen is there's no solution. Um, thinking about what you did on Thursday, does anybody remember what kind of lines have? Yeah, Grace. Yeah. Okay. Does that is name? Does anybody know the name for lines that never touch? Yeah. Parallel. Yeah. Parallel lines never touch each other. Good. And then the third option is called infinite solutions. And that happens when they're the exact same line, okay? Any questions about those three before we start practicing some graphing? Okay, so we have two equations, 2x minus y equals negative five and 2x plus y equals one. So before we do anything, we can't graph those yet. What do we have to do? Slope intercept, we need to put them in y equals mx plus B form, good. Um, so my first line, 2X minus Y equals negative five. I'm assuming you know how to put it in slope intercept form because we've been doing that for a week now, two weeks. So let's, I'm gonna go pretty quickly, but please stop me if you have a question. So I'm gonna subtract 2X to get negative y equals negative five minus two x. What is that coefficient of y? What number's in front of that y? Yeah, Carson. Say it. Negative one. Negative one. So we wanna divide everything by negative one. So that gets me y by itself. Negative five divided by negative one is positive five. And then we have minus two x divided by negative one would change to a plus two x. Um, that makes me happy, but I would prefer you to write it like this instead, just so that it's in proper standard slope intercept form. Okay, so before we do the second line, what's our slope or m? two, and I would encourage you to put two over one to remind us to go right one. And then our y-intercept is zero, five. I hope you started to notice that the steps to put these in slope-intercept form is always the same. You move the x term and then you divide by whatever the coefficient of y is. That never changes. Every time we do this problem, it's gonna be the exact same thing every single time. So if you're a person that likes to like have the, a rudimentary like routine, then that's what, you're, well, that's what you're doing every time on these. Well, let me get my 10 back. Okay, so the second one is 2X plus Y equals one. So I wanna get rid of that positive two X. So I wanna subtract it from both sides. So Y equals one minus two X. And I'm done, but I would like to change it to negative two X plus one. So it's in proper form. Okay, so what's our slope? Negative two over one, yeah, or negative two. And then our y-intercept is zero, one. Okay, so before we graph, we need to try to be as accurate as possible when we draw our lines. Because what happens if our line is a little bit off? Yeah, well, yeah, if, I, if my goal is to tell where they're crossing and my graph is not accurate, what's gonna happen? If my graph should look like this, but it's a little bit like this, what's gonna happen? You're gonna write down the solution incorrectly. 
Um, so graphing is not necessarily the most efficient way to do this, but as of right this moment, it's the only way we know. So that's what we're gonna do for today, okay? So let's graph, in my case, the purple line, but line number one. So I'm gonna use my first color. If that's your pencil, that's fine. So we're gonna start at five. So zero five is where we're gonna put our first point. And then my slope was two over one. So from there, we're gonna go up to right one, up to right one. And then I want you to take your ruler and you wanna make sure that your line is long. Don't just like connect the dots or don't do what I just did. Um, like you should be extending it pretty far because you don't know yet where they're gonna cross. So you wanna make sure that you take up as much space as you can so you don't, so you can tell exactly where they cross each other. Oh goodness, I'm on struggle bus right now. There we go. Stitch, okay. All right, so let's graph our second line. So we're starting at zero one, that was our y-intercept. And from there, my slope was negative two. So I'm gonna go down to right one and I'm gonna make a couple points and then I'm gonna connect them. Okay, so first thing, how many solutions is it gonna have? One solution. So since it has one solution, let's name it. What point, hopefully you're accurate, do your two lines cross at? Negative one, three. So that would be our solution, negative one, three. So you can see some of you may not have gotten exactly negative one, three. That, I mean, you're human, you make mistakes, that's okay. Um, but try your best to get your lines as accurate as possible. Um, not saying that your answer is always gonna be a whole number. What happens if it were a decimal? This probably wouldn't be the best strategy to use to get our two, um, our X and our Y. Um, and then our last one, negative one, Oh gosh. I'm like any Harry Potter book. Okay. And then a book called Bear Town. Town, yes, Bear Town. Okay, no problem. Okay, so let's answer some questions about this graph. First question. What do you notice about the point negative two, five? So you might have, to, you gotta flip back and forth. So flip back to your graph. What is special about point negative two, five? So if I look at my graph, negative two, five is right here. 
It's on which line? My pink line, which line was that? Line one or line two? Line two. So it's on line two. What about one seven? It's on line one. And we've already talked about negative one three. Yes. Yeah, so it's on both lines, right? Or it's also called the solution. So it's on both lines. And since it's on both lines, we call that the solution. And then last one, what about one one? What about one one? Cole, what about one one? You're talking about zero one, one one. Neither. All right, it's neither, not on either line. Neither, neither, neither. Which one do you say? Neither line, neither line. Not on either line. You could say that too. Neither. That's why, that's where the word neither comes from. Not either, neither. Any word will sound weird if you say it like 20 times in a row. <clears throat> okay, so we feel good, feeling good so far. So here's two more equations. You don't have a graph now. I wanna know for each of these points, are they on line one? Are they on line two? Or when it says the system, that means that it's on both. So what could we do? Well, we could graph, but we can't, I'm telling you, you're not allowed. So how do we know if negative two five could be on either one of those lines? What could I do? Oh, go for it. Okay, I could do that. Then what? I was going to say the y minus 1 or is that? Um, no. Keep going. I'm curious. Oh, that's all I had to say. What? The y minus 1. Y minus. Oh, oh, you're talking about the yeah. slope formula. I lied. That is not what we're going to do, <laughs> but a good try. What could I do? Cool. Um, if you put it in, mm -hmm. Oh, maybe. maybe. Carson? Put in like a number for X and then do the equation and then the line will be. Okay, so put in a number for X. Well, what do I want my X to be? This is asking about what point? Negative two, five. Which one of those is X? Negative two, which one of those is Y? Five. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace negative two for X and five for y and see if oh, that looks like a heart. See if it equals eight. Um, if it does equal eight, then that means that point is on that line. So if we're talking about negative two five, let's just focus on line one. So five times negative two. I'm putting in negative two because that's what my x value is. Plus two times five. I'm putting in five because that's what my y value is. And I want to see if, if I simplify that, it equals eight. Where am I getting eight from? Well, it says equals eight, okay? So five times negative two is negative 10 plus 10 equals eight. Mm -mm. So I know that this negative two five is not on line one. What else do I know? Yeah, it's not going to be the answer because it's got to be on both of them for it to be, it's got to be on both 
So if it's not on one of them, it's definitely not going to be on both of them. So by process of elimination, the answer is going to be what? Line, line two. two. But let's just make sure that it is on line two. Um, so I'm going to take line two, and I wherever I see an X, I'm going to put a negative two. Wherever I see a Y, I'm going to put a five. So negative three times negative two minus two times five equals negative four. So negative three times negative two is positive six. Minus two times five is 10 equals negative four. Is that true? Yes. yes, six minus 10 does equal negative four. So I feel confident. All right, let's try another point. This point is two, negative one. So we're gonna do the same thing. So let's jump back to line one. So wherever I see an X, I'm gonna put a two. So five times two plus two times negative one equals eight. Five times two would give us 10 plus negative two equals eight. True? Okay, so it's at least line one, and I still have the possibility of it being the system. So let's check line two. Negative three times negative two, or sorry, positive two, excuse me. Um, minus two times negative one equals negative four. Negative three times two is negative six. Minus two times negative one is negative two equals negative four. So re really I'm doing negative six plus two equals negative four. That is true. So it's true for line one, it's true for line two. So that means it's actually true for all of it. The system, correct. Okay, I'm gonna have you do number, letter C. Before you do that though, which one of those three answers is not true without even doing any work? The system, why not? Yeah, how many times do lines cross each other? Once, I already know that they cross each other right there. So that means they can't also cross each other at zero four. So I just need to see is zero four on line one or zero four on line two. It can't be on both. So I'll give you a moment. I want you to figure out which one of those lines it's on. Do you have a question, Cole, or you got it? Okay. Don't say it yet. Do you have a, were you gonna say something else though? Oh, because I know, because Bria came and you're still the only boy. Um, <laughs> one, two, three, four, four. How many um, girls? I have four more girls on digital too. So <laughs> definitely more heavy of a girl. But it's funny though, because my fifth period is all boys in class and two girls. It's like literal the opposite. So you just... You either lucked out if you if you like that or you're unlucky if you don't, depending on your preference. For some people, it would be better because you don't have distractions of all your friends, which I'm is better for you. Huh? Maybe. Yeah, that table, I'm I might need to um <laughs> it's just WD40, not 640. But <laughs> Um, the table behind Bria, I was sitting at it during the quiz the other day and then fifth period, it just like collapsed. Did you? Yeah, I fixed it, but it collapsed on me. Yeah. Um, okay. So zero four, um, so five times zero plus two times four equals eight. Zero plus eight equals eight. Well, that sounds right. So it is line one. And if I just double checked, line two would be zero 
minus eight equals negative four, which is not true. Beautiful. Okay. Um, so is there ever a time when a system will not have a solution? When does that happen? Yeah, Cole. Okay, parallel lines. And I just want you to make a quick set sketch of a pair of parallel lines. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as they are right in line with each other, aren't going to cross. Those are parallel lines. They could be in any direction we would want them to be in. <clears throat> okay, we're going to graph one more together, and then I'm going to have you graph um, one on your own. So let's look at number three together. So I have x minus y equals three and negative two x plus two y equals negative six. So let's first change them to slope intercept form. So let's start with x minus y equals three. So we wanna subtract x from both sides to get negative y equals three minus x. And then we wanna divide everything by negative one. So y equals three divided by negative one would be negative three. And then negative one divided by negative one is gonna change this to a plus x. And then if I'm being extra, on this, I would write it as x minus three personally, but if you want to leave it as negative three plus x, that's fine. Okay, uh, before we move on, slope is what number? One, one over one or one. Y intercept is zero, negative three. Good, Mackenzie, negative three because that minus is in front of that three. Okay, so let's do the other equation. Negative two X plus two Y equals negative six. Is that what it said? Yeah. So we wanna add two X. Yeah, it was negative, good. Yeah, good catch. Um, so that'll leave me with 2y equals negative 6 plus 2x. And then we divide everything by 2. So y equals negative 3 plus x or x minus 3. Wow, that's the same thing. So what type of answer is it if they're the exact same line, infinite? So technically we're only gonna graph one line unless you just wanna be redundant and draw another line over the first line. It doesn't matter. They're the same line. So you just have to draw it once. So we're going to start at negative three. Okay. So you should subtract four X to get three Y equals three minus four X and then divide everything by three to get Y equals one minus four thirds X or y equals negative four thirds x plus one. Um, so my slope there would be negative four thirds and my y intercept is zero one. Sophia, I think you had those written backwards when you sent it to me. I think you like wrote b equals the, the other thing. Um, and then the second one, two x minus five y equals negative five. Um, this one is where if you had an issue, it probably came from. So everybody did this right. So subtract 2x and then negative 5y equals negative 5 minus 2x. And then we want to divide by negative 5. So 
So that'd be y equals negative five divided by negative five is one. But I want you to look, it says minus two divided by negative five. So we have a minus in the numerator and a negative in the denominator. That would change it to a positive. Positive two fifths x or two fifths x plus one. So our slope would be, oh dang it. Oh dang it, cool. There we go. Um, our slope would be two fifths and our y intercept would be zero, one. Um, technically don't need to graph it. Where do they cross? Zero, one, yeah, both of them have a point zero, one. So if they cross, it's gonna be at that point. Um, so I could just say it has one solution at zero, one, but I would like you to graph it. So the first one, we're gonna start at zero, one and the slope is negative four over three. So down four, right three. So let's go ahead and make that line. So that's what your first line should look like. Then our second line, we're starting at zero one and it was up to right five. Down to right one, two, three, one. As good as I'm going to get. So again, the only point that they cross is right there at their y intercept of zero, one. <clears throat> All right, let's try and practice one more graphing. Um, and then we'll just answer one question and then we'll be done with notes um, for today. So we have our first equation, x plus y equals five. So that's pretty simple to change to um, slope intercept form. All we have to do is subtract x, y equals five minus x or y equals negative x plus five. Teachers, I'm so sorry for this interview interruption. I've gotten a question on the fundraiser paperwork, which teacher's name needs to go down on that sheet. It needs to be the homeroom teacher's name, the homeroom teacher. Thank you. Okay, so then our slope would be negative one over one, and our y-intercept would be zero, five. And then the other equation is 2x minus y equals negative 2. So we want to subtract 2x to get negative y equals negative 2 minus 2x. And then we want to divide everything by negative one. And I'm using negative one because in front of that y is an imaginary one. So it is negative. So y equals negative two divided by negative one is positive two. Negative two divided by negative one is still positive two. So your equation would be y equals two x plus two for our second line. And if we want to name the slope, it's two over one and the y-intercept would be zero, two. Slope would be two, one, y-intercept zero, two. So let's graph them and then we can talk about the other question that goes along with this. So first one, starting at zero, five. From there, we're going to go down one, right one. And then for the other one, our y-intercept was zero, two. 
And then from there, we want to go up to right one. Oh, looks like I found where they intersected because that's where I had to touch to make my points for my line. Oop, 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 oop. Oops, I'm struggling with these lines today. All right, I'll give you a moment to finish drawing, sorry. Okay, so part B asks, what's the solution? Okay, so they cross at one, four. They cross at one, four. So here's a little bit of a challenge. I want you to make an equation that will also cross at one, four. So I want you to make up an equation for a line that will also cross at one, four. There's an infinite amount of answers. It just depends on what you make your y-intercept and what you make your slope. So try and come up with a y-intercept and a slope that will also cross at one comma four. Did anybody come up with a line? What'd you get, Jemiah? Okay, Jemiah says y equals negative two x plus six. So if we were to graph that, we would start at six and go down to right one. I agree, that crosses at one, four. Grace, what'd you put? Y equals negative four x plus eight. So that means we're gonna start at eight, go down four, right one. Yes, that would cross at one, four. Carson, what'd you do? Y equals x plus three. X plus three. So start at three. Go up one, right one. Yes. Any other different ones? There's there's a lot. Lena. Y equals three x plus one. Y equals three x plus one. Cole. Y equals, four x. y equals four x. So if there is no something being added or subtracted, where do we start? At the origin or at zero, zero. And then we would go up four, right one. And that would put us at one, four. Again, there's an infinite amount of answers I could have done but those are all correct. I could have done y equals negative 96 x plus 100. Start at 100, go down 96, write one, and I would still end up at one four, okay? As long as my point crosses at one four, or my line crosses at one four, that's all I care about. Okay, let's answer this last question, um, and then we will be done. So two linear line, linear functions have no points of intersection. So that means they're parallel. Which pair of functions does not intersect? So first thing, how can we tell from an equation if they are not going to intersect, if they're going to be parallel? We're concerned about the slopes. So if they do not intersect, their slopes are the same. So if their slopes are the same, that means that they are going to be parallel, unless they're the same line, obviously, then they're gonna um, go right on top of each other. Um, so we need to see which one of these have the same slope. So we could graph them, or we could put them in, y equals mx plus b form and see which ones have the same slope. That's a lot. So let me give you a little bit of a trick. I don't care anything about the constant. I don't care about the 12, the 14, the 12, the 30, the 12. 
And look at those, those are already in slope intercept form on, B, on C and D. So I'm actually gonna start with those. So let's look at C. 6X plus 2Y equals 12. I'm going to solve for Y. We're just gonna do this one and then I'll sh share the trick with you. So we want to subtract six from both X from both sides. So 2y equals 12 minus 6x. And then we want to divide everything by 2 to get y equals 6 minus 3x. Or y equals negative 3x plus 6. So what is the slope? Negative 3. Is negative three and 0.5 the same number? No, so I know that C is wrong. Oh, look at that. The same equation was used on letter A. So what's the slope of that one? Negative three. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this, but to find the slope, you can kind of do it in your head. I'm gonna take this number, six, divided by two, which is, three and make it its opposite, negative three. Here, I'm gonna take 20 divided by 10, which would be two, but I wanna make it its opposite. Negative two would be the slope. You could change all of them to y equals mx plus b. If that makes you happy, please do it. But if it's in this form, if all of you are looking for a slope, I can take this number four divided by two, would be negative two because I want the opposite. 20 divided by 10 is two, but I want to make it the opposite of negative two. Yes. Oh yeah. Now, if I asked you to graph it or something, then we couldn't do this because we are, we are not worried at this point about my y-intercept or my constant term. So forget about that. All I'm worried about is the slope. The slope only involves the coefficient of x and the coefficient of y. So I don't care about the y-intercept right now. Um, so a is wrong. We're hoping b is right, but let's just double check on letter d. So 10 divided by 10 is 1. So the slope would be negative 1. And this slope is 0.5. So D is also incorrect. So the only one that has the same slopes would be letter B.